In this version of Beamble, we've added our micro storage preview feature. For the last several versions, we've had our microservices feature, which allow you to place microservices in the Beamable cloud. With the preview feature, now you'll also be able to use databases and have your microservices talk to those databases easily. We use the latest version of Mongo and the raw Mongo driver. Let's take a look at how to set that up. Before you can get started, you need to go to the config window and enable the preview feature by going to the microservices page and clicking enable storage preview. For the purposes of this demonstration, Let's say that we want to build a game where users can leave messages for each other around the game world. That means that we'll need to store user messages with location data in our database. To start, let's create a new storage object by going to the Create tab and clicking Storage. We'll call our storage object User Data. Your storage object will appear below your microservices, and it looks pretty similar. Let's turn it on by clicking the Run button. You can view the raw Mongo logs here. Just like microservices, your storage object leaves a C-sharp class and assembly definition. If you go to the Beamable section of assets, go down to storage objects, you'll find a folder for your new storage object. Let's open up the class. This class represents the database, and we can use this assembly to store mapping classes for our database. Let's create a mapping class to store our user-generated messages. Mapping classes should always include an object ID field, which comes from the MongoDB BSON package. The next step is that we need to tell our game server that it has the ability to use our user data storage object. In the microservices manager, click on the dependent services button. Click the checkbox between your two services. Click confirm. Once it finishes loading, you'll see a warning that this is a preview feature and that you won't be able to deploy this microservice. This is because the database won't yet be placed in the Beamable cloud. Let's navigate to the game server class so that we can start implementing our server. For our players to be able to save and read messages, we need to implement two methods. One where users can post messages to a location at X and Y, and one where users can get a list of messages at X and Y. Let's implement the save message function first. You can access your database right away, readily from your microservice class. To access your database, simply use the storage property, use the getDatabase method, and pass in the class name of our database, which in our case is user data. This returns you a pre-connected Mongo client connected to our database. From here, we can get a collection of our mapping class, which we called user message, and we just need to pass a name for that collection, which we'll call messages. From here, now you have a fully authorized connection to a Mongo collection. I'll fill in the rest of the code here to speed things up. Similarly, for our get messages function, we'll access the database, get the same collection, and then use the Fluent API in the Mongo driver. Now that we have our server code written, let's write a simple mono behavior to invoke these methods from the Unity game. On a game object, I'll create a simple script called message reader. Every time this game object moves, we'll use its position to query our database through the microservice for messages and just post them on the mono behavior. I'll fill in that code now. Before we can really see everything working, we'll just need to pre-populate our database with some messages. For now, I'm gonna use the Swagger documentation to take care of that. So I'll open up our local Swagger documentation. And I'll use the save message API to post a couple of messages to the database. As a side note, the documentation will let you also read your messages. I've gone ahead and pre-populated some messages in our database, but we can take a look at them before we even run the game by opening up our Mongo Data Explorer. In the dropdown for your storage object, click Go to Data Explorer. We've pre-packaged Mongo Express, which is a Mongo GUI that you can use to explore your data. All of your data will be placed in a database by your SID and PID. Here's our message collection, and you can see that I've already added three entries one at zero zero and two at one zero. Now with our message reader component, we can actually run our game. And as we change the position of the transform, this messages array will actually change as it loads data through the microservice from the database. So let's go to zero zero and see one message. And now let's go to one zero and see these other two messages.